the Lord in a moment of prayer, everybody everywhere. Let us talk to our Creator. Lord, we exalt your name. We lift your name on high. We place you at the highest place. You are the the door. And there is none like unto you. For everlasting, everlasting your God. Your eternal Father. Your the sovereign and we glorify your name the sanctuary this morning father i pray you empty us of self this morning you burn out sin and carnal weakness and i pray almighty god you be pleased with our praise you need our worship i pray almighty god that you will be seen and you will be glorified you will be lifted up and you'll be exalted in the midst of your people this morning. And so, Lord, we honor you and glorify you and praise your eternal name this morning. We pray, Almighty God, that you come and dwell with us. You come and sit with us. You come and tabernacle with us. You come and abide with us this morning, Lord, as we heal ourselves to you. To be complete. Holy Spirit, right here with us, with the doubt that we shall be revived when we shall leave this place in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we give praise and glory and honor to you, Almighty God, Spirit of the living God, for a fresh on us this morning, Almighty God. We, we thank you, Almighty God, for bringing us together in this night this morning. And we ask, Almighty God, that you fill this place with your presence. Let your sweet aroma fill this room, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, let us commit all into your great hands, Lord. Have your way as we continue to worship and continue to praise you, Lord. In Jesus, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody give him a praise in the house. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Most high, say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Church, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Oh, the name of the Lord. True. Yeah, the righteous one. Hallelujah. Yeah, and they are saved. Yes, the name of the Lord is. Yeah, a strong tower. Somebody say the righteous run in into it. And they are saying, Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. The name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Church, the name of the Lord. Oh, a strong tower. Yeah, the righteous run in into it, and they are saved. Oh, the name of the Lord. Yeah, a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice. In it, in it, in it, has been. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Say, I will rejoice, say, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, I will rejoice, for he has 
we live under, God has been good. Whether we are on the mountain top or whether we are in the valley, God has been. And he is still God. Amen. At this time, I'll ask the ushers to kindly collect our of honor as we are ready to do the procession. So kindly collect. Our guests of honors are here. I'll ask that the ushers. As they are getting our rest of honors, we are going to be singing the song, What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. Can we all stand? What a mighty God we serve. Oh, each has come Oh, 
earth. How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one forever the same. He rolled back the water from the messy red sea. He shall lead you. Close your trust in me. How great is our God. How great, how great is his name. He's the greatest one forever the same. He rolled back the water from the mighty red sea. He said, I need you. Put your trust in me. How great is our God, how great is his name, he's the greatest one forever. He rolled back the waters from the mighty red sea. He said, I need you, put your trust in me. God, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. We're going to invite Sister Andrea Reed at the time. She's going to do the old. We'll tune into this song to be, to be like Jesus. All I ask. Is like to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask, all I
we love Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As I said it before, God is still God. And I'll say two other things. Prayer still works. Praise and worship, it still works. So if you think it not working, prayer still works. Praise and worship still works. 
and God would have left his manuscript. He would have left his guide, which is the word of Almighty God. Lean on it. All when you feel like you can't read it, the one verse you can't manage to go through because of what you are facing. Lean on Jesus because God is still God. God is still God. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to have the grand welcome at this time for our guests of honor. And I'll hand over to the media team. Shall we all stand? At this time, I welcome Brother Brian Francis, who will be reading this morning's scripture, which will be taken from Mark 10, verses 42 to 45, and then 1 Timothy. Go ahead. Shall we all stand for the reading of God's holy word? Let us praise the Lord this morning, church. Praise the Lord. Let us worship him this morning, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Indeed. Jesus. Hallelujah. Indeed, he is worthy to be praised. And he deserve all the praise. Now, this morning's scripture is taken. I have two scriptures. Mark 10, 42 to 45. And it says, But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, He know that they which are called, which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles, exercise leadership over them, and the great one exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your ma shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be your be the chief first shall be servant of all. And sorry, if for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom of for many. And the second is First Timothy. First Timothy five verse seventeen. And it says let the elders that rule well be counted worthy for double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. This is a portion of God's holy word. Be honored by saying, Glory be, be to, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, beginning no one ever shall be. Word, word without end. end. Amen. Amen. Brother Francis. At this time, we'll have the opening song, Jesus Shall Lead Me All the Way, which will be led by the praise and worship team. Where he may lead me, I will go, for I have learned to 
trust him so and i remember was for me that he was laid on Calvary's Jesus shall lead me night and day Jesus shall lead me all the way. He is not true.
Hallelujah. I invite Sister Georgia Simdwiz this morning's welcome. today as we come together to recognize and appreciate our pastor and his family. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It is indeed my privilege to stand here this morning to welcome the Father and the Holy Ghost in our presence and indeed we can feel that the presence of the Lord is here. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our guests of Reverend Wayne Pasco. Minister Joan Pasco, uh, young Naomi, and Kehim. Kahil. 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 All right? In our presence this morning. And we are so honored to have you as our guests of honor this morning as we go into this appreciation service. We also would like to recognize, visit with us in practice this morning, uh, Tricelle Ritchie and Naomi. Party, so I'm going to ask you to just stand so we recognize you. Right. Great, so give them that warm central village welcome. You will be here with us, and our door is open to you. So please feel free to come and visit with us at any time. Are you from this area, or are you visiting from where are you visiting from? Sorry? St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth, wow, far away. Well, welcome, and we're pleased to have you this morning. <laughs> to our Facebook and um, YouTube friends, we just want to welcome you to this or appreciation service. We want to welcome everyone, and we are grateful that you're here with us today as we celebrate with our Bishop Pascal and family this morning as we take some time out to just appreciate them, recognize them for their work, and it's just to show them some love this morning. We thank you so much. And as the scripture said earlier, which the Bible tells us, first twenty-five verse 17, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. So while we know our ultimate reward is in heaven one day, we need to recognize each other for the work that we do here on earth. And that's why we take the time out to do, do this. So, so come again to this our appreciation and appreciate you, Bishop and Lady Pasco um, and family. Bless you. All right, brethren. Reverend Peku, don't leave. Freeze. Um, excuse me, me just borrowing a little of your time. Me that try my very, very best to behave myself, but me I borrow a little of your time. So choir, join with me now. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, dear reverend. Happy birthday, need him, sister, sister to me. Happy birthday. Thank you. 
thank you, Sister Mati. I will go and ask Rev to just do this quick honor. Reverend Peku would have celebrated his birthday on December 8th. I'm not going to ask him age. Because chances are, I'm not going to tell me. I'm telling him age. You hear 50 few. So we are going to ask you just to make this presentation to Reverend Peku. Reverend Peku, good morning. <laughs> On behalf of the church, I want to present you with this Merry Christmas Day gift. It says, have yourself a Merry Christmas, a Merry Little Christmas. But I do hope that you have to enjoy the gift from your church. God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you, Rev. All right. Sister, oh, I'm, my, I'm at, you'd get a memo? You get the memo, you know? The memo, too. Don't we visit and get the memo? Yeah, pick up which memo? You know, see, we dress, we can't match with the family. We in a blue. Hey! The people them in a blue get the memo. Don't be jealous if you are not wearing blue today. We got the memo. All right. So I would like to applaud the family. They are looking wonderful today. Can we give them a round of applause? Rev, we can see that suit was especially made because I'm not book anywhere else. Miss like that. So... You might have to link up the, the men with whichever store you'd go, or if you have someone who costs it and, and link them up. So, so think about it. It suit look good. It suit not set up. Only must tell people when them look good. Even straight in Japan Road, stop them and tell you look good in a lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look good. So the family is looking good. Can we give them a round of applause once more? Can you stand? You know that Naomi and sister Pascal would have just stepped away. So thank you, brethren. At this time, we are jumping right into the tributes. We have Life Builders, then Children's Ministry, Women's Ministry, Vessels for Christ, followed by the Performing Arts Ministry. And you will come in this order. Life Builders, Children, Women, Vessels for Christ, and Performing Arts. Morning again, church. The Central of Belief New Testament Church of God. Men, express our gratitude to Bishop Dr. Wayne Pasco. Pasco's excellent leadership. We acknowledge your spiritual guidance, which have led to personal growth and deeper relationship with God. Your and compassion have touched the congregation, offering spiritual counsel and comfort. The emphasis you put on this type of mentoring has taught the men of the congregation to be men of strength and character. Dr. Wayne Pasco, your tireless effort in the community have positively impact society through outreach programs, community service, uh, acts of kindness. Your humility and transparency has fostered an environment where men feel comfortable sharing their struggles. The men's department and the entire congregation are grateful for your unwavering service leadership we have propelled it we have propelled them toward 
deeper understanding of God's love and commitment to living out his promise, or his purpose, sir. So on behalf of the men's department, I, Brian Francis, teach you our appreciation. Thank you.
Women's Ministry or the Ladies Choir, it is your time. Vessels for Christ, followed by the Performing Arts Ministry. Vessels for Christ, followed by the Performing Arts Ministry. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Reverend Pascal and family, we hope to minister this song unto your heart to trust in the Lord in the good times and also when you're low in the spirit Oh, 
ministry carefully so they are going front and center thank you ladies can you collect members around there? Can you collect them and bring them around? After the Performing Arts Ministry, we are going to have open tributes. There are three things for open tri tributes, two minutes each. Keep it short and spicy. After open tributes, we will have the collection of the tithes and offering and the special envelopes for today. They are to go.
into the bucket that Sister Peter will be holding. So all the envelopes for today's service, you know them, they're clearly labeled. They are going into the bucket that Sister Peter, my Ekron, will be holding. Media team, are you ready? One of these sky is going to split and I shall see the king of kings and the lord of lords anybody looking one of these days we're going to see him face to face anybody looking for that day one of these days the trumpet's going to sound one of these days the eastern sky is going to split and I shall see the king of kings and the lord of lords Anybody looking for that day? I hear the sound of a mighty and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. It's Gabriel sound. That the midnight cry will be going oh oh yes we will I can see the prophecies fulfilling to 
and a tweet when I'm at Iowa. Cause at the midnight ride. The head must tell of us that, hey, a day is coming, and we can tell Sister Pastor on this message, reminding us that a judgment day is coming, and at the midnight cry, we will be going home. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise be to God. Go ahead, Sister Marjorie. At this time, we'll have open tributes. Three open tributes, two minutes each. Is there anyone you want your slot by yourself? You don't want it with choir or with a group and you want to come and speak now is your time i'm counting down from 10 to 1 if you need a special slot for yourself 10 9 somebody around come she around come she around come all right <laughs> Make Sister Edwards welcome. Make her welcome. Good morning, man. Uh, to the pastor. Mom, you have been a uh, power of strength to the Central Village people. It's not a pleasure, but it's also a privilege to have you here. You are leaders of integrity. You lead by example. You preach what you live, and you live what you preach. And no matter how it seems difficult at times, and it seems like you can't make it, you can. And God is there with you. As he said to Joshua, they said two minutes. As he said to Joshua, be not afraid, but be strong. And be very courageous, knowing that even if the church is not with you, it continue to what you from your heart. Praise be to God. Anybody else? 
Elf. Run, come, run, come, run, come. Good morning. Hi. I'm going to do a nice little short song for you guys. It's give them one pure and only passion. Give them one magnificent obsession. Give them one glorious admission for their life. Throw and follow up to you. Oh, to grow out up to you. To go as your samples in your truth. This world is empty, pale, and poor compared to knowing you, my Lord. Leave them alone and they will run up to you. Leave them alone and they will run up to you. God, woo! Love it. Anybody else? Anybody? Anyone? Four. Three. Please help me make welcome Sister Kimone Kennedy. Keep clap her, man. We don't make it look like we don't see her every day. Well, good afternoon, still morning. Good morning, everyone. Well, my mom is not here. So on the behalf of Sister Kennedy, I'm just going to say, Pastor and family, uh, we do appreciate you. Thanks for the good work. And you're always welcome in Central Village as you do your good job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm of Sister Kennedy. <laughs> When no one said, if her sister Kennedy, you know, she would have finished yet. And she would have had one or two stories. So we know that she'll drop in her part when she comes back. We wait. Send it as we collect the dates, tithes, offering, and special envelopes and remember all the special envelopes marked appreciation day they are going into the container the bucket that sister peter maekron will have and she's the one looking like a wonderful garden in the middle with a red hat so that sister peter time praise and worship team Though the battle may be hard and the conflict so oh rocky the road, I travel alone. Hold on a little longer. Say Jesus at His word, He will carry you through, right through to the promised land. Though the battle may be hard, though the battle may be hard, and the conquest so, and the conquest so, so rocky the road as we travel along. Hold on a little longer. Take Jesus at His word; He will carry you through, right through to the promised land. Though the battle may be hard, though the battle may be hard, the rocky the road, I, I travel alone. Hold on a little longer, take Jesus at His word. He will 
will carry you through, right through to the promised land. Oh, heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy, what bliss on the streets of shining gold. In the land where we never grow, heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy and bliss. I love the preaching and the testimony too, but heaven is better than this. Oh, heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy and bliss. Of shining gold in a land where we never go. Heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy, what bliss. I love the preaching and the testimony too, but heaven is better than this. My home is in heaven. Just Waiting for, me. Just waiting for me, and when I reach there, I'll be happy, I'll be I'll happy, I'll oh, be. my home is in heaven, no rent to pay, my Jesus paid it, paid it all for me, my home is and when I reach there, how happy I'll be. My home is in heaven, no rent to pay. My it, paid it all for me. Shall we bow our heads and invite Sister Heavens at this time to pray for the offering and special collection. So shall we all stand for prayer? Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let's worship you. You will be this morning awesome. You are awesome this morning, God. You spirit of life to be in your house to worship you and to glorify your name this morning. Without you, God, we are nothing. Without you, God, we are like without a save. But this morning, God, we thank you. God, remember your children this morning as they bring their offering, tithes and offering to this morning, God. I I pray, God, that you will bless. I pray, God, that you will sanctify. I pray, God, that you will um, lift up your children this morning, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You are, you are awesome. You provide for us, God. And we could bring a portion into your house. Oh, hallelujah. And so, God, we know you to put things upon your children. Father, we thank you for the special offering. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the special offering this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray, God Almighty, that you will bless your children as they give this special offering to your man's servant. I pray, God, that you will move in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, you will make the way We worship you and we adore you. And we leave everything in the of the Son. In the name of the blessed Holy Spirit, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Heavens. Thank you, Ushers. We'll continue with our program. So our next round of tributes, we will have Family Life Ministry and on the Family Life. The parenting area of family life will be doing a tribute. Then we will be having the youth ministries followed by pastoral care. Afterwards, we'll have the introduction of the speaker combined choir. 
then we will hear the word. So parenting, I'll invite the representative from the parenting chapter. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm the secretary of the Central Village Pitting Club, and I'm given the task to do the tribute. Now we ask brothers and sisters to who are who, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you of them in the highest regard in love because of their work, live in peace with each other. First Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. It is with great joy that we as a congregation set aside this day to honor our leader, a man of God, a visionary, a mentor, a spiritual father, Bishop Dr. Wayne Pasco and his father. With your parenting club, your unwavering, you are one of a kind, most of a gift from God. From you, we have learned the importance of worshiping wholeheartedly and with love. Without a doubt, we can all attest to the fact that through your teachings on worship at the Lord's table, we have experienced the importance of being in God's presence daily. Knowing that the agenda of the worshiper is to meet with God in worship. We are aware that leadership can be difficult, scary, and daunting. But you have taken on the responsibility of faithfully renting in being the of this bishop, we are grateful to you, we salute you, we love you, and we appreciate you heartily. Thank you for being such a great example of living by faith. Thank you for making a difference to our church family, our parenting club, and to the old central village community and its environs. Sister Pasco. We thank you all heartedly for your grace and genuineness. Most of all, thank you for sharing your husband with us. Brethren, please join me in giving God thanks for this leader who preaches without compromise in God's sight. This is a leader that is very wise. It is therefore fitting to encourage him to stay strong as he continues to preach the gospel and bring sinners to Christ where they belong. To be that you are living in We love you and we appreciate you. Let the church stand and give an applause for Pastor and his family. Praise be to God. We thank Family Life Ministry and especially the Parenting Club, the Parenting Chapter in Central Village. At this time, I hand over to our local youth director and invite the members of the youth choir.
the youth department of the central let me start over sorry the bible says in first thessalonians 5 verses 12 to 13 now we ask you brothers to respect those who work among you who are over you in the lord and who admonish you hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work and live in peace with each other the youth department of the central village new testament church of god recognizes you reverend pasco and you sister pasco as the man and woman that has worked hard among us who was chosen to lead us at such a time as this and so today, we, the youth, hold you in the highest regard. We say thank you for your guidance, for your correction, for your We will continue to pray for you and your entire family as the Lord strengthens you to fulfill the purpose for which he has called you to. As the Lord declared this blessing, we, the youth, we the same blessing over you. Which says, the Lord bless you and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give the entire Paschal family his peace. And we all say, Amen. Amen. You will have to fight, but victory or defeat, it's up to you to decide. But how you have if you never try, you must have given up now. You come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy, and I don't believe he brought you this far to leave you. Never said there would be trials. Never said you wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way you wanted to go. But when you feel all hope is gone, you just lift your head up to the sky. You can't give up now. You come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy, and I don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. You can't give up now. You've come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. And and I don't believe he brought you this far to leave you. Amen. All 
All right, while they are greeting Pastor and his family, I am going to... I am going to invite the pastoral care ministry at this time to come. Pastoral care ministry. We bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. A pleasant good morning to the guests of honor and family this morning. I pray as we do this song that it will be a blessing to your hearts. You may feel like you want to die. And Emilia. And you may feel the sun will never rise. Clouds are hanging down. You may feel like you want to give up. And you may feel like you can't move on. But you must never stop and cry. Just wipe those teardrops from your eyes. And keep your feet on the ground. Don't let the devil Keep your Oh no, don't let the devil get you down. I know the work is hard to do, but if you try, you'll make it through. And even though time seems so hard Jesus will always see you through at times it seems you're all alone at times it seems you're on your own me and keep it on the ground Don't let the devil get you down Keep your feet on the ground Oh no let the devil get you down. I know the work is hard to do. But if you try, you'll make it through. And even though time seems so hard, Jesus will see you through. At times it seems you're alone. At times you're on your own. But in the midst of your storm, Jesus will take you through them all. 
Just keep your feet on the ground and don't let the devil get you down. Keep your feet on the ground. Oh no, don't let the devil get you down. Praise God. On behalf of the pastoral care group, I would like to token of our love and attention. You know that we love and appreciate you very much. God bless you, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you, Pastoral, Pastoral Care Ministry. Our speaker for today is not a stranger. She's a child of the soil, a wife of one, a mother of several. I mean, I say two, <laughs> because not to count the ones that she are, she's counting and so she's well. Logical, but a mother of many. Her sister is white. The combined choir will be singing, after which the next voice we will hear is white. So at this time, I'll invite the combined choir to stand. They will be ministering. The Lady Squad, before Hallelujah. doing their presentation, will minister and then do their presentation. Hallelujah. Uh. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the, praise the Lord? When you should feel so sad, why does your heart feel glad? Why does your soul feel so happy and gay when all around you burdens fall, yet you're not at all? will roll your burdens away For he opened 
You're never let You walk beside you each day. Just to live right and true. And if you pray, King Jesus will roll your burdens away. All the way. All the way. Yes, all the way. will roll your burdens away if to him you pray for he open doors for you those you're unable to see for if you pray King Jesus will roll Shall we continue to bless the Lord? Shall we continue to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? For if you pray, King Jesus will roll your burdens away. Somehow, somebody never get that song a while ago. I didn't plan to talk about it, but let us talk in a second. We all have burdens. No matter how we look pretty, something are going on our inside. We all have burdens. But what a blessed assurance it is to know that if you pray, if
If you pray, King Jesus will roll your burdens away. Shall we thank God for that this morning? Thank you, mighty God. The criteria is prayer. Prayer changes things. For if, for if you pray, if you pray, King Jesus will roll all your burdens away. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. I said to myself again, what month are we in? And then it come to me, December. And so today is the final youth Sunday in 2023. And I'm saying to you that whatever burdens you have in 2023 on a youth Sunday, don't carry it over to 2024 youth Sunday. Because if you pray, King Jesus will roll your burdens away. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The task is mine this to speak to you on this youth Sunday. But it's also my task to speak to my pastor and his family. And so I have a dual role this morning. I don't know how it's going to happen, but God is going to do something. And so we are trusting God that he's going to do something. I had this song written down, and so we may sing it one or two times. So I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace. He kept me. God kept me. He kept me. So I, I wouldn't let go. Can we sing it another time? So I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of his grace. Oh, he kept me. God kept me. He kept me. So I wouldn't let go. I just sent someone who felt like giving up. This morning, sister, the heavens. And someone who is going through a situation where you feel like where it makes sense. Why trust God when God is not coming forth when I need him? Why trust God when, when I call upon him? He's not delivering. I hear the person's testimony. I go to church. I pray. I read my Bible. But when is my time, God? When am I going to get married? When am I going to have my child? When is it that I am going to get that job that I want? When is it that I am going to go to university like everybody else? When is it that my brain is going to start work like our brain for work? So I'm here today because God kept me. When I like you are I'm alive only because of his grace, oh, he kept me. You shouldn't be here, but you are here. God kept me. He kept me. So I will let go. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Brethren, I don't know about you, but it's a final youth Sunday in 2023. It's a, something about the final. We don't know about 2024, but we are here today. Today. What we have is now. And so let us give God what we can give him now. Because the word of God says that tomorrow is promised to no one. And today we're here also to appreciate our, our past and him 
and pastors in general for their hard work, for what they have done, and what they are and what they need in the Can we just give them us at this time? Let us celebrate them. Happy Pastor and Family Appreciation Day. The topic this morning, as you can see, is entitled Forward Together with Committed Service. Forward Together with Committed Service. But I want to add a little subtopic to that. Only by the grace of God. Forward Together with Committed Service. Only by the grace of God. The scripture is from us, chapter. The 17, reading from verses 8 to 13. I'll read while you follow. Exit verses 8 to 13. Then came Amalek and fought with the Israelites in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the mountain with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and her, her, her up the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israelite, the Israelites prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand were weary, heavy, as the scripture says, and they, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the left and the other on the right. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek, and his people with the edge of the sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now this is a path that carries in it, and with it, a sermon on the very face of it. Just to read it is to fill our own hearts and minds with a flood of spiritual things. But due to the nature of today's service, being both Youth Sunday and past and family appreciation service, I want to look at two things from the passage. One, the people, and two, the prophet. Let's first look at the people. How long had the Israelites been out of Egypt? They hadn't been out of Egypt but a few days or maybe a week. And then this one. They came to Rephidim and Amalek fought with Israel. Just of the Red Sea, that, and on the other side of the Red Sea from Egypt, they were fed with manna from heaven, and they were given to drink water out of the flinty rock. And I can just imagine those people with a sea between them and Egypt, and eating manna from heaven and drinking water. I can just imagine they are reclining in ease and peace and security. No, they were not where their enemies were. We've got it made now, they may have thought to themselves. There's a sea between us and enemies from heaven, giving us a fountain of but the saying goes, when you think it's peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon you. And so verse, chapter 17 verse 8 says that, and immediately came Amalek and attacked Israel at Rephidim. Another thing about that following the pillar of the cloud and the fire, according to Exodus 13. Isn't that strange how God does things at times? Being in the presence 
of the Lord. He would not lead them directly to the land of Philistine because it went through Philistia that way. And God said, if they see war, they will turn back. So the cloud did not lead through Philistia. It led across the Dead Sea and down south the opposite direction. And yet, and yet, after the province of God had protected them from so very much, and yet, the Lord God himself led them into there and the battle against Amalek. You would say to yourself, why would God do such a thing? God is protecting me and leading me where I should go. But why would he cause me to go in the path of the enemy? Why would that? A man says, I don't know if you know that he's working over good. These things to make us strong, though we don't see how they could. Then he goes on to say, though we may not understand that we can place it in God's hand. For we know that God is working all things together for our good. And that's what we serve. He will not lead us into something that he's not equipped to take or save the truth. If he takes you there, rest assured, he has made vision for you to pass save the truth. Trust him. Trust him. Trust God today. And another thing that we need to know from this passage is that the attack from Amalek came from no provocation on their part at all. They didn't see Amalek. Amalek. They didn't. They have done nothing. They had said nothing. They were just on their way to the promised land. They were just walking, minding their own business on their pilgrimage. And without provoking, they were attacked by Amalek. I just want to say today that you are that way as a child of God. And this is a testimony of our lives as Christians. Without doing anything to anyone, you are going to be assailed. You didn't know? Let me say it again. Okay. Do anything to earn. People are going to trouble you. You are going to be challenged. Battle. And I continue. For one thing for certain is that Satan is going to happen. So, so if you will not fight the devil, the devil is out to get you, whether or not you're fighting. So all we can do then is just what? Fight. Fight. Because if you're fighting, the enemy is going to fight back. And if you're not fighting, the enemy is going to fight back. So just fight. The word of God says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And some of us don't really realize what that scripture is saying. Because we think that we are warring against our neighbor. We think colleague. Think but the word of God says that we honor them. We wrestle not against against power, against the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we need to get an understanding of who we are fighting against, who our enemy is. Because if you don't know who is your enemy, then you'll be overtaken by the enemy. The enemy is not who you see. The enemy is who you can't see. It's a spiritual battle. And so to fight a spiritual battle, you have to get spiritual. Prayer. You have to get spiritual. Don't you ever think? My little party, see, I'll just mind my business and you mind yours. I don't trouble you, you don't trouble me. I see on the left, I will walk on the right. Just leave me alone. Think that my little part is on a smooth sailing sea. Man, 
if you are a Christian and a child of God, and in this pilgrimage, you are in for conflict, for war, it will be on the inside of you. Your mind, you battle yourself in your mind. Some person will say, not mad people, you see, I walk the road because we are in constant warfare upstairs right here. So, so you may not be warring with someone externally, but internally you're in battle with yourself. Enough. Thinking that you should be better. Thinking, thinking. So, It will be here. to kill us to God. We must trust Him. So, this world that we're living in, if we follow the world, we'll go straight to hell. You have yourself in such a time as this. Through much tribulation shall he enter the kingdom of God, says Acts 14 22. In this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, says John 16, verse 33. It is a pilgrimage of conflict. You shall meet Amalek, whether you want to meet him or not. Amalek will come to you. Amalek will visit you. And your Amalek will be anything that will cause you to sway from God. And anything that challenges your Christianity. And so prepare for it. You shall be attacked. But for the grace of God. So I'm here today because God kept me alive today only because of his grace. Oh, he kept me. God kept me. He kept me, so I wouldn't let go. So strengthen yourself, my brothers and sisters, and stay committed to God and the things of God. That is the only way you shall make it. That is the only way you shall prevail. Because the enemy is out to get you. But if you stay with God, you pray up yourself, you read the word of God, and you strengthen yourself, the song and press along, saints, press along in God's way. Press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear. Trials and crosses in our way. All the attack, the battle, the sweet and the victory. Bless the Lord. I now move in the second stage to a godly prophet. We now look at verse 13 to see what God told Moses to do in the situation. Great or pastor and family service today. Our pastor is symbolic. Of all Moses in today's society. From the people, even though he was following the direct, likewise, pastors at times. A pastor cannot please everybody, but he has to try to please everybody that comes through the door. If he has several children, people say that he has too many children. But if he has no children, they say he's setting a bad example. If he is young, people say that he lacks experience. If his hair is gray or falling out, he's too old for the young people. If he preaches from his notes, we say he sermon and he's too dry. Mm -mm. If he does, they say that he is studied and he is not deep enough. If he suggests changes to improve the church, he is a dictator. If he pours no suggestions, 
in a illustrations in a get the illustration it will make point there if he fails to please somebody he is hurting the church and he ought to leave If he tries to do it, if he preaches all the time, then people get tired of hearing one man preach. If he fights against Nico, then he is shirking his responsibility. If he doesn't take a step, that's what he should do. If he receives a large salary, he is a mercy. But salary, well, that's what he deserves anyway. Can you see that it is hard to be sitting in the position of a pastor? Anyone see that? It is a challenge. Brethren, we must first realize that our pastor is a human being. Yes, he has and downs, his ins and outs, his good and bad. But there is a call of God upon his life that derives or drives him onward to fulfill the call of God. He goes above and beyond, even on his social media accounts, where he brings the word of God across religiously on various days. He is committed to the work of God. We must also take note that most of his doing is not of himself. He's accompanied by his wife and children and his wife and children after so much and not only or after so much to ensure that he carries out his, the best of his ability brethren we should appreciate our pastor it's good for you and it is good for him scripture tells us that the pastor is a gift to the church jeremiah 3 verse 15 says I will give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Ephesians 4 verse 11 says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. There is a great need for pastors to be appreciated and for pastors to be prayed for, mm -hmm, supported, and encouraged. Oh, your pastor is that much. Now back to the text. Exodus 17 verse 12 reads, But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it, and Aaron and Ur supported his hands, one on one side and the other other side. And his hands were steady, until the going down of the sun. You understand what was going on, don't you? Rev, can you stand up? Can you stand for me, please? So hold up your hand. Represent Moses. Just step forward for me, please. So the word of God says that Moses prayed for the people. His hand was up. Israel won the battle. And when Moses' hand was down, go down with your hand, Moses. Amalek won the battle. So the aim of the game is to do what? Hold up your hand, Moses. Hold up your hand, Moses. But Moses was human just like all of us. And so Moses became weary at times to be holding up your hand for 10 minutes. Three hours, five hours, but for the whole day, Moses' hand became heavy. And so the word of God says that and Moses here now represents our pastor. His hands, right? It had his hand up to worship God. And the army of Israel prevailed in battle. But when Moses could hold up his hand, the weight of his arms, the length of time, the sheer fatigue of humanity, the Israelites from, from earth held up his hand. And so what? Hold up at one, they signify the church. He saw to his needs, set support for him, held his hand up in prayer. The army of Israel would prevail. We are the church. 
It's the same way for the church today. The pastor is like Moses. And Aaron and Ur represent the church members. When the church acts like Aaron and Ur, then the pastor is blessed. And the church prevails in battle. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. The church prevails in battle. When the pastor has to deal with little insignificant, snippy things, they, they things to whine, especially on the church. And if they're reporting and encouraging the pastor, then we can't expect to win. If we are not calling up the pastor, he's the head. And one thing we know with the devil, he loves to attack the head first. It comes in your mind and it causes you to start think defeated thoughts. And when you start think defeated thoughts, you start do defeated things. You start to become depressed, anxious and all these things because your mind is in you something. Likewise, the body of Christ, the enemy seeks to attack the head. And so it's our duty as a church to pray for our pastor, to encourage our pastor. And that's the only way we can win the battle. If we don't, then we lose sight of what the battle is all about. And what is it about? It's a time and equipping of the saints. The pastor and the church have to be busy about the father's business. So imagine if you see a head bouncing about the plane. Huh? Imagine if you see a body walking around without a head. Lord, I just start to the blood. Hmm? But together, we have head and body. That's what God designed. We have to be moving together with committed service by helping each other. Aaron and Ur supported Moses. Brethren, it is good to find a way to support pastor, your pastor. Prayer, or pray rather for a way that you can support your pastor. You may not have the money. You make your grease in palm. But you can pray him up at the time. Pray up your pastor because prayer changes things. You will be blessed for it. Your church will be blessed for it. And your pastor will be blessed for it. You help him all his hands up by winning. Pray for him. Love and fight is you. Because not everything we pastor do and say you're going to agree with. But love him because he's in the role of pastor. And he's human. Understand. Praying does not mean praying about. God, what kind of pastor that you give me? Look how you have them long, them days that we want fiery pastor. There's days that pastor talk, oh, I want pastor when I talk so much. Praying means, or it doesn't mean praying about him. Or praying, P-R-E-Y-N-G, praying upon him. Bullying him, pastor, and that's how it do. And that's how we do the central village. You must learn the ropes by now. Praying upon him. But praying is to pray him. Put for God. Tim before God. His responsibilities are better than yours as a Christian. For their responsibility is to watch over your soul. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God, what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Praise God. Just going to invite Ruth Anderson, Sister Heaven, Sister Ratigan, to just come and pray for Sister Barrett White before she goes back to the Please step up, lady. Thanks. Instead of being spectators, we'll all pray while the ladies are praying for Sister Barrett West.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise, praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. As they announce the, the last teacher of the year, um, I say yes, God, I finally know a last for teacher of the year. It gets a cl getting closer to home because Mr. Burrell from St. Andrew Hat we would have studied in a particular program with the National College of Educational Leadership. He was in our course. Now, the one year, my sister Barrett White, as the last teacher of the year, because with God, anything is possible. We must know somebody even closer to whom. We get that award. And after all, so she come from Alaska just did it so. Yes, sir. So you don't know. They said what good can come out of Nazareth. And they will say what good can come out of Central Village. Because when many persons hear Central Village, a one thing comes to and wonder Auntie Camille. Are they say you live? You still live there? <laughs> Still live there and still give God thanks. I'm not addressed by the people and make it up and make a thing. So I'm live anywhere else. Central village, my barn. Yep, I live. And it's a good day for my resume. I'm a go get the job with it wherever I go. Praise be to God. Thank you, Sister Barrett White. What a word. This time we are going to welcome the women's ministry. They're going to do their present, their item, followed by a presentation. Then we are going to have a presentation from the church, and it will be done by a member of the finance team. Ladies, okay. All right, Sister Chantel is just asking you to come this side, ladies, seeing that so many of the other ladies are here. So it's just the ladies from the ladies' choir who will stand and you will do your item and then you'll do your presentation. There's a city of gold across the river. When I reach it, I'm told I live for it. My soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan. On wings of love, you soar away. Not a moment to lose, make up your mind. Take a moment and choose God's love divine. From the moment you're saved, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and live eternally for heaven is free of oh, you'll be. I am so glad 
and no sweet peace and pardon. Wheresoever I go, I'm glad to say, my soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan, on wings of love, you soar I want to tell you, Mr. Pastor, we love you, and we appreciate you for being here with us. And as we come today, we have a little token for you. It's not finished yet. This is just a part of it. And so we ask that you'll accept it until the rest arrive. God bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, we'll invite Sister Peer, who will do the presentation on behalf of the Pastor Council. We'll invite parenting to come at this time. So parenting will do their presentation before the church. So Sister Francis, you have a presentation to make. All the members of the parenting club, club please sister Peter, sister edwards and others marlene come So to Rev and family on behalf of our parenting club, Central Village Parenting Club, want to say we appreciate you, we love you, and we are giving you this as a token of our love. And
tablet here too. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Okay. Is it with deep and gratitude that we come together to pay tribute to a remarkable and his family, Reverend Pasco and his family? His unwavering, unwavering dedication, exemplary leadership, astute stewardship, and effective management of church community have left an indelible mark on our hearts and soul. We talk about leadership. Bishop Pasco has been the beacon that guided us through both calm seas and stormy waters. I remember when um, COVID and Reverend Pasco um, indicated that every one of us this morning is on the watch WhatsApp group. October days on it. Anything. anything. Or sometimes when we're not supposed to, we put it on it. And we can say the arm is a man of vision where that is concerned. Though his insightful, through his insightful sermons, compassionate counseling, and visionary guidance, he has inspired us to walk in the path of righteousness and embrace the teachings of love, compassion, and understanding. Anybody remember the inner court prayer meetings? Amen. Every four days. But more inner court. Sometimes we're online. Most times we're in the sanctuary. Talk about leadership. It's on the pulpit. It extends into the community. Its initiative, whether in outreach programs or community service, has touched the lives of many Illustrating the true leadership of serving others with open hearts. Anyone join the online worship at the Lord's table? Anybody? Anybody here? Worship at the Lord's table every morning. And it has been a blessing to many persons here today. Management. Bishop Pascal management skills have played a pivotal role in the growth and stability of our church. Whether overseeing day-to-day -day operations or spearheading transformative projects, he has displayed a keen understanding of organizational dynamics. His ability to let delegate responsibility, encourage collaboration, and foster a sense of community has created an environment for everyone valued. I'm um, to baptize persons, a brother, one or two brothers would be with pastor, but he's going there alone by himself, right? He could have gone in there by himself. Other brothers would have helped in that aspect. Moreover, Bishop Wayne Pascal has been a forward-thinking manager, embracing technology and modern strategies to enhance communication and outreach setting up of the media to broadcast for members in the diaspora as I'm, as I'm, told, I'm sure Sister Kenny England is watching and I'm sure Sister Thompson is watching as well. Pastor has a hand in that and we all say thank you sir for those initiatives that you have created for us and there are other Person, sister, that's watching, and Sister Loney. I could name a few persons that are watching us at this time. In conclusion, Pastor and family has not only shepherded our flock with grace and wisdom, 
but has also been a shepherd who actively tends to the needs of each lamb in the field. Leadership, stewardship, and management have transformed our church into a vibrant, compassionate, and resilient community. For his impact on our lives, let us also commit ourselves to carry forward the torch of his teachings, embracing the values and leadership, stewardship and management that he so diligently modeled for us. The hymn 267 says, sir, carry on for Jesus everywhere you go. Let the hope and glory be the seed you sow, like a streaming beacon through the darkest night, guiding souls aright. Carry on. God bless you. On behalf of the pastors' council and members of the congregation and community, sir, ma'am, we want to say thank you. We want to give you, present to you this small token of our love and appreciation for the work that you continue to do here in Central Village. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Pierre. Thank you, Church. Thank you, Pastor Council. At this time, we are going to receive the response from our pastor, who will speak on behalf of himself and his family. Afterwards, we will have prayer for the family, and this will be done by Church Council members. But what will happen, similar before, from praise for Rev and family, all members congregation will stand as well and we so even before we leave church we put in into action what we would have heard from the word amen amen all right so Rev, it's time for you oh name someone open surgery Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we bless the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can we just lift up holy hands and magnify the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Indeed, he is greatly to be praised. And we give thanks that he has brought us to another Sunday morning. We could have passed and gone. I always keep saying that. And so when we live to see Sunday morning, we have to give God praise. Amen. Amen. Continue to say, and I never stop saying this, that if we take walk in the hospital this morning, then we have something to praise God for. Because we might be going through it, but let me tell you something. Hallelujah. They are in their pain about going through it. And in their minds this morning. They don't even know what day is today. Food went to the mouth, but they don't even know what they're eating. They are not able to see. They can't walk. Some can see, but they can't talk. But thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have feet that we can walk on. We have pain in the body, but thank God. Hallelujah. He is a good God. Glory to the name of Jesus. In all of my years... As a minister's wife, over 20 years, I've never, never given a thank you speech as appreciation. But it dawned on me to do this this morning. And I was kind of, you know, thinking, no, even when I came here this morning, I said, mm -hmm, God. But when I heard the message, that I had to do this, this morning. This is confirmation. And I know that God is indeed in this. So I'll do it without fear. 
And I'm going to do it without favor this morning. Hallelujah. Now the month of December is set aside for pastor's appreciation through the New Testament Church of God in Jamaica. It is the time of year we celebrate the shepherds, that is the pastors, that God has blessed us with. I remember our home, at our home church, we made it for pastors' appreciation. It was a big thing. From, the, from one pastor's appreciation is finished like today, we begin planning for the other one next year. And so it was a big thing. We look forward for it every year. We also had the opportunity to celebrate and encourage the woman who serves alongside him. This morning, I will borrow the words of a pastor's wife. She said, and I quote, we all have different roles and titles that we are known for. Some of us are CEOs, some stay at home, some moms, some coaches, and others of us are kids. And all different things of life and titles. I've had, and she says, none get quite the reaction as to when I share that I am a pastor's wife. It can be said, at end of quote, sorry. It can be said that it is one of glitter and glamour. Because when you look at the pastor's wife, you believe when she walks in the church on a Sunday morning, it is all glitter and glamour that some people see and want to be a pastor's wife. Some see it as a position of high esteem, a place that demands respect. One that gives fulfillment when someone comes to Christ. When the believer grows, mature, and engaged in spreading the good news of salvation. This is where we are fulfilled. This is where I am fulfilled. Talking from a pastor's wife perspective. This is where I am fulfilled when someone comes to Christ. So it is not only a life of glitter and glamour. It's not at all dressing up and saying that you're first lady. But man comes somebody gives their life to the Lord. And when the believer grows, we are, we are here, and when believers begin to grow, we know it is obvious that they are in my fulfillment. When we are mature in God, it is obvious again. It, I am able to see it and that's where I get my fulfillment from. Coming to when, when a person after coming to Christ, you're not a believer, you begin to grow, you mature. Then my own fulfillment is when you begin to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Don't keep it to yourself. I met the man. Hallelujah. He's working in my life and I want to share it to you because I want you to have this experience. I want you to grow just like I have grown. This is where I get my fulfillment. But I say to you, Central Village, the road that I am traveling on as a pastor is not what it really seems to be. From the outside in, there's this picture that everybody gets of one driving smoothly without any bump or church. But look out. After a year, I realize there are potholes. And sometimes, if left unchecked, these potholes become craters. That cannot be crossed. I'm talking from experience. The potholes and craters brings its share of situations. And it is at this time that I would like you to know, Central Village, 
that I do struggle with discouragement. I love. I love. And I encourage others. While I am more discouraged than ever. And in, these, in those moments, when I get so discouraged, and I feel that I'm going to just throw in the towel, I can't bother. This is it. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is when God steps in. And it is in those moments that someone always approaches me with a situation that brings me to my knees on their behalf. It is that moment that God himself encourages me. Using that situation or other situation to teach me a thing or two. And I'll explain here. So there are times when I'm going through my stuff. There are times when I'm discouraged and ready to just give it in. But God always needs someone to come to me with something that when I look at it, it's far bigger than what I'm going through. And see how it's significant that I go on my knees before God, interceding for that someone. And in that moment, God ministers to my heart. Hallelujah. I'm talking from experience. The songwriter assurance, he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. When I feel at times as if all is lost, the Father gently reminds me in the most serene and soft way that he is still in control. Using words like, am I not God? Just lately, very soft and calm and serene, the voice of God listens to my heart and says, am I not God? And I had to stop and think. So I would like you to know that as a pastor's wife for over almost 20 years, I have learned and experienced the joys, the sorrows, that is the outcome of being, a, of being married to a minister and a pastor. Although not really knowing to expect when I went, when I, well, not I went in this that I keep testifying wherever I go that I was tricked by God. I didn't marry a pastor. It came my way time and time again when the better lights would come to the church that my father was passing and wanted my hand in marriage. And I would never have it because I knew what I went through as a pastor's child. And I never saw myself going back through it. So I said no. But this is what God had done to me. He allowed me to meet my husband. And about four years into the marriage, to the ministry. And that's why I say God tricked me. <laughs> he tricked me, set me up big time. So he called him after we were married. And I, had, I couldn't do anything about it. When he told me what, 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 what was happening with him, he had to resign his jobs that he had. And, you know, the call was on his life. I said to myself, I'm, I'm, you, you are in this thing by yourself. I'm not into this thing. I'm not in it. But then God really stopped me. He stopped me in a vision. And I, I had to pray. And so, although not really knowing what to expect, I embrace ministry, knowing that God will take care. Because being a pastor's child is different from being a minister's wife. And joyfully, I mellowed in the service of the Lord. Sure, I really enjoy serving. But there are days when I don't want to be a pastor's wife. I just want to be me, Sister Pascal. I ask the question so many times. Why does being a pastor's wife come with so much sorrow? Still, to this day, no answer. But I take comfort in God, in the God that I serve, that when I witness the many times he showed up for me. The many times he has provided for me. The many times he favored me. All I can see is God strengthening me for me. 
So I wait patiently and humbly, trusting his holy word, for he never fails me yet. I want you to know that I've been hurt by the people in the church. Maybe you don't believe it. But I want you to know that I have been greatly hurt by the people in the church. But I must love the people of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. I must love the people of the church in order to make the heaven. That's my prime goal. I want you to know that you and you and you and you are privileged to be with your families, especially on holidays. But we have to serve you on these occasions. Years after years after years without being with our own families. Yes, say, you knew what you were going into. Yes, this is the road we have taken. But I just want you to know. I just want you to know that coming to Central Village, I pray family of believers who would be really, really my family or our family, knowing that we are so far away from our family and rarely sees them. I want you to know that we love every single one of you. If you can't find it in your heart to love us, we, we still want no one to be left behind and we say we love you. We want you to know that we appreciate those who are praying for us. And listen to my use of word, those. Because not everybody is praying. And some people who pray, pray damnation. And I speak without fear and favor this morning. Some people that praise, praise damnation. But I'm thankful for those who are praying for us. Thinking about us, just to think about us. We feel it, you know. We feel it. Think about us. Like your ear ringing. You're ever aware and your ear begin to ring. And you say, I wonder what happened to one of my child. You call the name. We feel it when you are thinking about us. Just to enter into the sanctuary and see your face when you approach us. Tell us that you are thinking about us. So don't you think that we don't know? I want you to know that when you love my husband, stand up, Bishop. When you love my husband, you are pastor. I love. I'm telling you this morning because I know. So when you, when you, when you, when, when, when you love him, I feel love. When you you love him and he comes we, he goes home it is it, it shows him he's bubbling and, 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 and he says to me I am stressed I am stressed and when I hear my husband speak of being stressed I am the one who would normally speak of stress. He never uses those words. You may see. But when he speaks, I feel it in the core of my being. And I lift my hands to God and I say, God, where are you? And he says, am I not God? Be still and know that I am God. We are not weak. But we we are living and we are operating under the Holy Spirit guidance. And he says to me, be still and know that I am God. So I just want you to know, Central Village. I want you to know. So the encouraging notes. You may not write a note. 
or you may see him. Bishop, we are praying for you. That makes a difference. The text messages, he does get some. The prayers, we do get some. The persons who pray war, fear, and fire, and brimstone, pray and send it to us. And when we hear it, it's always when we are at our lowest. So it's very important. When you inquire about the children, you may not see Karis, you may not see Kaim. Karis is gone to work. As we, she was sick. So she would not get today. So she's at work. Kaim is on school business. And so she's not here. So that's why Kyle alone is here. When you don't see the children and you inquire, how are they doing? It helps us. It means the world to us. Yes, ministry is hard sometimes, but there are so many ways that our family gets to see God working and moving in and through us. Being the hands and feet of Jesus to the pastor's family helps to remind us of God's care and faithfulness in our lives. We have hands and we have feet. But at times we would want to carry us, be our hands. What's up? At times we would love that. And I'm not saying that it is not happening. But I'm saying it can be better. I want you to know that we are called and sent by God. Therefore, we know the mission that we are on. We know the mission that we are on. I want you to know also that we understand the mandate. So God has called us to a mission. And we understand the mandate, hallelujah, that he has called us. And that is to win the loss at any cost. We are soldiers. I am sold. I am a soldier. Standing resolute. Speak for myself and my husband. We are standing resolute. Clothed with the Holy Spirit. And saturated. In his anointing. Hallelujah. To do what he calls. We are not. And I tell you, Central Village, we are not weak. I say we are following the Holy Spirit guidance. So we are not retreating. And I speak it again. We are not retreating and we will not retreat. We are not surrendering. And we will not surrender. Hallelujah. Because God is with us. And he has called us to win the loss at any cost. And that's what we are here to do. Our call do the works of him who has called us. And not to bow to the devices of man, nor of the enemy. We now watch no peace. I want you to know in closing, amid the challenges throughout the year, we thank God for the testimonies and the observance of our members here at Central Village. We are elated to have served you for another year. Looking forward to serving you for many, 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 many years. So long as God would have us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pasco, for that word that you shared. That word speaks volume. Let me say good 
afternoon to everyone who came today and those online. I was talking with some of those who were online. When you saw me texting, I was responding to some persons who were in the program. But I'm thankful to God for this day. Today is our fifth um, appreciation service sitting up into Central Village. I know some of you are not counting, but this is number five. And uh, on behalf of my wife and family, I want to say thanks to you all for making this day happen. Sister Deidre for that word. I don't believe we could have had a better word than that word today. It, it fits the situation very well. And as she spoke, I was making some jottings. I won't tell you what I was writing down, but I, was, I love to write things down. Because when I leave, I will look back at it and it will refresh my memory. So thank you very much, Sister Deidre, for that word. It, it spoke, and I was praying, and I said, God, I pray that it will speak to the right hearts. Because I do have a set of people here in Central Village who are my horse and my errands. They continue to lift up my hands. Many times my hands get tired, heavy. And it's falling down, but then the horrors and the errands will send me a text message, will send me a, a word of encouragement, will call me and say, Pastor, I want to pray for you. This is my little thing that I do. And I really appreciate those times. As I sat there and uh, my wife was talking, some things began to come back to my memory. As she said, you know, she never married a pastor. I want to correct that because the seed was already in me. I was trying to escape it, but it didn't go. So God only confirmed his call at the right time. But I remember as a photographer, which was what I was into, and I still do it as a hobby. I remember I had opportunities. The opportunities I had was to take up a job offer on a ship. It was a very beautiful offering. When I looked at what was involved, sometimes when I tell the children about it, they say, Daddy, we could have been better off. And I say to them, we could either be better off or dead. Because some things that comes your way is not necessarily God who sent it. But because it looks good, we grab a hold of it. The last offering I got was, I think, sometime last year. And I got this message from a gentleman who lives in Kenya. He wanted me to take up his congregation and the associated churches as their overseer. And I told him, I am pastor and I work with a denomination and I cannot serve two masters. The Bible says either you're going to love one and hate the other. So I was honest with him at the first. I said, I can't take it up. But he kept calling on me to take up the offer. I remember I spoke with Bishop Notice. I went to him and I said, sir, I don't want this offer. I don't feel that I am the one. Who should take it up 
I am asking you to lace on with this man and allow the denomination to take these churches. And the bishop said, I can go ahead and work with them. That's the long and short of it. But I still didn't feel it in my spirit. And I called the gentleman and I said to him, I am not going to take up your offer. But I will pray that God will send you the right person to be leader for your congregations. And that was the end of my conversation with him. He never texted me back until about, I think, a week ago. He messaged me. So there are always things circulating around, but my eyes set on what Jesus has called me to. In spite of the many challenges, Paul said to Timothy, endure hardship as a good soldier. And I see myself as a good soldier. So I plan to endure hardship in whatever shape or form it may come. So I take the words of our sister, Deidre, and I pray that the church has taken the word. Remember the word was for the people and for the prophet. So I took my part. I pray that you will take your part. How can you hold up the pastor's hand? By Bible studies. By attending services that are held at church. And in whatever ways you can support the ministry. Do it. Because every time that you fail to lift up the preacher's hand, the pastor's hand, the prophet's hand, it does more damage to the congregation than to the pastor. Always remember that. It does more damage to the congregation than it does to the pastor. Be careful of what you say to others about your church and about your leader. There are two more things I need to say, and then I'll take my seat. My speech is different this year. I was at my cousin's funeral yesterday, and my cousin would have been 43 years old yesterday. She was buried on her birthday. She died on her sister's birthday. So her, her death on the date of her sister's, that, that's the birthday gift that her sister got from her. And her birthday gift was her burial yesterday. And as I sat in the church in Westmoreland, I began to think about the journey from birth to death. It is very short. David said it is but a hand breath from the tip of the middle finger to here. Some persons call it a span. But it's very short. Very, very short. And one of the thoughts that came to my mind was be careful of the steps that you take between birth and death. Because it is a very short journey. I want to challenge the church of God today. Make sure that you, wherever things are gone wrong, you try to make them right. My wife said that she has been hurt by church people. I hope that's not the only part you heard. Because I did. But that she has to love the church people the same way. And I've always said to the church, the only thing you can do to me is love me and love me more. Because if you hate me, you're not going nowhere more than six foot six. And they're not even giving six foot six again. They're sharing it nowadays. Because they say one person who um, precious for one person to be buried in. So they make sure they got it to be deep and share it for two. Or three. Amen. So let us love one another. I know that I have been hurt by church folks. And I know that sometimes I hurt church folks too. But I am never 
I've never considered myself too, too big to say to anybody, I am sorry. Never. Amen? Let us look forward to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before it is too late. These words are not mine. They are borrowed. But I have to say them in closing. If your pastor cannot correct you, your pastor cannot cover you. No accountability is a liability. And if you are ready to leave every time you get rebuked, you are not looking for a covering. You are looking for a cover-up. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. Until and if we meet again. It's love. Sister Brown would say, no love. All the way. God bless you. Amen. Shall we all stand? Count members, I invite you at this time. Reverend Pastor and family, I ask you to do for. Can someone get tired? Yes. We thank you and to be here. All my life you have been changed. All my life you have been so, so good. With everything I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. So good with every breath that I am able, and I will see of the goodness of God. And after the leaders of the various months, you are the head of a parcel as requested by Red. So if you know that you are a leader for a parcel, I ask you to come forward. You have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. For I will sing of the goodness of God for the last time. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God.
goodness of God. Faithful, all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath I am able, and I will of the goodness of God. We're almost out of here. Just some announcements. Just sit for two minutes. Um, after the fact that we are here this late, it means that there is no service this evening. So Rev and the family will enjoy family time and you will do the same. However, we meet back here on Wednesday for fasting and prayer at 10 a.m. There is no Bible study for this Wednesday, but we do meet for fasting and prayer. On Thursday, there will be ladies' ministry at 7.30. There will be no men's fellowship today. Remember that normally on a second Sunday, there is no men's fellowship. On Friday, we will have p.m. Next week, Sunday, will be SIP Town at starting at 6.30. So it's in with starting at 6. So it's crowning with a difference, and it is face-to-face. -face. So we ask everyone to be out, to be in your colors, to support your group. Um, dress for your tea party. Ladies, wear your fascinator. You're dressing up for a tea party. If you're not sure, just quickly go online and see what happens at a tea party. Walk with your cup or walk with your mug and it's not a plastic cup. It's not a plastic mug. It's not that you walk with when you work. You come inside because it's sip and crowd. Um, the following Sunday will be Carols in Candlelight. So we are back here at 6, decked out in white, having our candles, having a wonderful time in the Lord, and that will be Christmas Eve. So please remember, next week Sunday, Sip and Crown, and the following Sunday, December 24, at 6 as well, will be Carols in have yourself a wonderful day i now hand back over to rev he will speak and thank you very much sister sophia i am just standing to do two dedications a uh, refrigerator was donated to the church recently and it's in the back section. Also, I have the key for a car that's parked on the outside. I was trying to play around with the remote, but I'm not hearing any car respond. So I don't, I still don't know which car that had the key. I have the gate this car before God this morning. Amen. This afternoon. It's also good to have my beloved sister, Shipmoy Peters, and her worship at the Lord's table baby with us today. And she will be coming back next week for christening of her baby. Amen. So thank you for making the journey from Kingston to here today. God protect you, God keep you, God bless you eternally. And to all of you who came, God bless you from St. Elizabeth. I heard the persons have left, but may God bless you and cover you as you journey. Amen. Please put your hands in that direction. God is not time bound in our space bound. So we know that even though we can't see the fridge, 
God be added to his son on it. You want to interrupt my prayer to say something? Yes. Oh, after me finish, you sure? You don't want to say no? Okay, ladies, I would like to invite the senior citizens out on Tuesday. We will be having a little get together right here for the senior citizens at two o'clock. So, all senior citizens, please come out. Even if you are not senior citizens, you can come too. God bless you. And don't let me provide the things that you don't come. Please. Stretch your hands in that direction, everybody. God bless you, sister. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for every gift that you have given. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And when you spoke into the life of that brother to contribute something to the church, Almighty God, we are thankful that he ever held back. That you will continue to believe in out and Likewise, I pray that the refrigerator will be used to serve the church, to serve your purpose here in Central Village, to be a blessing and not a curse. God, I pray that you will just take full control in Jesus' name. Likewise, this key that I hold in my hand for that motor vehicle, I ask you, Almighty God, to sit upon it. It is good that they have considered to ask the church to pray over this motor vehicle. There are many people who buy their vehicle and they just drive. But here is someone who, who decides that they want more blessed motor vehicle. I ask God to be with them right through Almighty God, protected from the sight of the enemy. The ones who have the intention to steal, I pray God that you will hide it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless your servant. Bless your people. And take full control of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. God's people say, Amen. Jesus. Oh, John, a special thanks and shout out to Sister Shereen Kenny and our team for the decor. Um, wonderful job done. So when you see her, you can extend thanks to her, as well as the input from Sister Georgia Simon.